So here, let's take a look at a paragraph answer question from AP Physics 1. And I could only find one that the, um, the College Board um, did on their YouTube channel for the AP Physics 1. Uh, it was like the first practice test they did, they did this past week. Um, or sorry, the second one. The first one looked like I, I didn't see any um, paragraph answer questions. So I didn't watch the whole thing. I was just trying to zoom through it. They didn't upload the, the question anywhere, which is why I was a little confused as to it. But um, let's take a look at this one. Uh, so this is a paragraph answer. This is the 15 minute question, right? Um, only two parts here. So actually not too bad um, for 15 minutes. Uh, I feel like the calculus exam is a little bit different, but um, like more time stress than, than the physics one. But here the figures above show three stages of a dive performed by an athlete. During the dive, the athlete completes several rotations midair while traveling from the platform to the surface of the water. Figure one shows the athlete just after jumping off the platform. And figure two shows the athlete rotating in midair. Figure three shows the athlete about to enter the water. In a clear, coherent paragraph length response, explain why the athlete's angular speed increases between figure one and two, but decreases between figure two and three. Okay, first thing we have to think about when you're approaching a problem like this is what can cause a change in angular momentum? Or sorry, ang blah, I'm giving away. The angular speed of an object, okay? I can have, there's actually two ways to do this. Like if it was just linear velocity, linear speed, there's only one way to do it. You need a net force to cause a change in linear velocity. And that is one way that you can cause a change. If you had a torque, a torque can cause a change in angular velocity. But in all three scenarios, he's free falling. He is only subject to gravity the entire time. There is no other force acting on him. We're gonna ignore like air resistance, stuff like that. During the whole scenario, he is just falling through through this path here, right? He's just rotating and through this path. And the only force is gravity. And gravity cannot cause a torque like that because gravity acts at the center of mass. And at the center of mass, it cannot cause a rotation around the center of mass, okay? It cannot cause a torque because um, if you're going to do the point of rotation at the center of mass, I don't want to get into the point of rotation. It could be somewhere else. But relative to the, the person his center of mass, um, relative to that point, there, it can't be a change of velocity. So it cannot be due to a torque, all right? Because there is no torque acting on the system. Okay, what else can it be? Well, if there's no outside torque on the system, right? Then you need to be thinking no outside torque means uh, conservation of angular momentum. That is a criteria for conservation of angular momentum. Technically, angular momentum is always conserved, but that depends if you include the entire universe as your system, right? So in the, in the case when you're talking about a, 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 a smaller system, like a person or something like that, angular momentum can absolutely change as long as there's outside torque. But if there's no outside torque, the angular momentum is conserved. So if angular momentum is conserved, what is angular momentum? Angular momentum is equal to I omega. The only way you can change omega is if you change I, change the rotational inertia. Because if, if, if I goes down, omega will go up, and vice versa, if I goes up, omega will go down, right? That's conservation of angular momentum because the whole quantity, I times omega, must be conserved the entire time through the process. Now, what's happening to I? I is... Um, rotational inertia and in general in physics one you it's kind of weird in physics one you don't analytically solve for rotational inertia in a lot of cases but it's in, in general it's about the distribution of mass that's what rotational inertia is about and the further mass is distributed from the center the higher the rotational inertia okay so let's put so so what's happening between figure one and two is that his mass is being clumped up closer together. So his eye is decreasing from figure one to figure two because the mass is now more concentrated in a smaller radius. That decreases rotational inertia and thus because of conservation momentum, omega must increase, okay? And then between figure two and three, he is now extending himself. So his um, rotational inertia now increases because his mass is now distributed under a larger radius. 
and thus as i increases his omega must decrease so we need to put that all together into a paragraph so let's type that up let's say um because the person is free falling the only force acting on him is gravity acting on the cent at, at the center of mass um, this cannot cause a torque at the center of mass thus the net torque on the person is zero therefore um, this means conservation of angular momentum applies because angular momentum is equal to uh, i time i times you know omega or you know rotational inertia times um, uh, angular velocity, um, an increase in rotational inertia will cause a decrease in angular velocity if the product is to remain constant. That is what conservation of angular velocity is. Between figure one and figure two, the person's rotational inertia uh, decreases because the mass is more concentrated in a smaller radius. Thus, the angular velocity increases. Between figure two and figure three, the person's rotational inertia increases. The mass is distributed um, at a larger radius. Thus, the angular velocity increases. Okay, and that's how I would have typed up part A there. B. So for the second part, uh, is the rotational kinetic energy of the athlete in figure two greater or less than the rotational kinetic energy of the athlete in figure one? And briefly explain your answer. Um, usually when these kinds of things, I like to do equations, but I'll try to do it without an equation answer. Um, so what happens is the angular momentum has like a, like, like the, a linear relationship, right? Like when I goes up, omega goes down and vice versa. But like when you do kinetic energy, it's one half I omega squared. So one of the things you could say is like I goes down, but omega goes up. But and they kind of go up by the same scale. But when omega goes up in the energy sense, it increases more than I went down. So in the kinetic energy, I went down, but omega goes up by the same amount, like squared, basically. Right, that's kind of like the scenario that's happening. So the kinetic energy in figure two is going to be greater because the let's say as an example, let's say I went down by one half, like I you know it went down to half of the original value. Omega would double, but omega doubling would make this four times more, and I being half would make that four times half. So the kinetic energy would go up by two times, right? As uh, with with concrete numbers. So um, that's the basic idea is the kinetic energy increases. Now you may ask as a natural question, because someone might think like, well, there's no outside force acting on it, or maybe I'm supposed to do mechanical energy, total mechanical energy or work done. What is causing that change in rotational kinetic energy? Because we just talked about in, in, in part A that there's no net torque on the system. So why is there work being done on, on it? And the, the, the fact is, is as the person contracts inward, he has to exert a force to bring himself inside. And that force, that redistribution of mass, that's work that he has to accomplish. That work increases his kinetic energy. Okay. So that, that's, that's basically the, the source of it. So if I were to type up the answer, I would say, okay. Um, um, because angular momentum is conserved, um, um, as I decreases by a factor, call it, we'll call it uh, factor K, um, the angular velocity increases by a factor K. However, 
kinetic energy, uh, rotational kinetic energy, kinetic energy is equal to um, rotational inertia. Oh yeah, I should say, instead of I, I should say rotational inertia as rotational inertia decreases by a factor. It's equal to our times uh, angular velocity squared. Thus, um, the rotational energy will uh, increase because I, because rotational inertia I decreases by K, but uh, uh, but uh, angular velocity uh, squared increases by K squared. Thus, the total rotational energy in uh, figure two is greater. So that's probably how I would explain it in terms of factors. You kind of say like, I is gonna go down by factor K, omega is gonna go up by factor K, but overall I omega squared is gonna go up by an additional factor there. And so that would, um, and that's all I would put. That was kind of a lot to explain. I think my video is gonna be longer than 15 minutes after I fix a few things, but like uh, overall that's, that's the basic idea.